Dude, imagine getting a lane in here. <laughs> You'd hear her still yeah, out in the that's gym. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's hotter than usual. <laughs> So we got our first, first ever guest on Sauna Talk. Welcome to Sauna Talk. One of us is gonna get burned today. <laughs> okay. Um, one oh yeah, yeah, my bad. Yeah. My bad. Yeah, you, that's our requirement. It's, it's really comfortable with you joining us. First Sauna Talk with a guest. We've got our fearless leader, yep. Rudy. For those that don't know your CrossFit story, how did how did all this happen? How long do we have? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very common CrossFit story. I would go to the Globo Gym and I would do some bench press and I would do some squats. No, I wouldn't do squats. I'd skip that part. Mm -hmm. um, you know, curls. Mm -hmm. And I would run on the treadmill a little bit and I would get bored so I could find a new gym mm -hmm. because that's motivation, right? New, new scenery, new equipment. And uh, one day I saw Iceland Annie on ESPN and I was like, oh my God, those socks. I'm in love. <laughs> Early aging yourself here. I, it is what it is. <laughs> And, uh, and I wanted to find a place like that. And eventually it did take another year or so, but I found a place and did that first workout and the typical, you know, thing it killed me. And I was like, mm -hmm. I'm in love and I'm never going to stop. And I quickly realized that I wanted to help other people find the same thing that I found. And one thing led to another and Elaine and I closed our eyes and signed the dotted line on a lease and opened up a place. And now after moving locations, yep. expanding, Yep. We're in our home now, which, and you know, one of the things that I, I love about you and Elaine that I learned very early on was the investment that you guys put into the experience for the members. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we're in this building and since I've been here for just over two years, like it, it almost seems like a new place every couple of months. Um, so I know you guys are seriously committed to member experience and, you know, have always put members first. You know, when you think about new members that are joining, what are some of the things that you talk to people about that, that when they're new and they're fresh and they're, you know, the deer in the headlights? It, this is about them and this is about their journey and their transformation. And, you know, it's not necessarily even about CrossFit. It, it's about them committing to something that they can actually stick to. And so again, that's my story, right? I couldn't stick to something. And here I am 13, 14 years later, still doing it on a daily basis and still loving it and still hitting PRs, which mm -hmm. is freaking nuts. Like I would, I'm going to be 44 in a couple of weeks and I'm still hitting PRs. That's huge. You know? And, and so it's, that's what I want for people is for them to fall in love with fitness, not even CrossFit, to fall in love with fitness because when they do that, then they're going to be able to stick to it long term. And then that's really when you get the results that you're looking for. Competition has never been you know, a huge focus, you know, of, of the gym because it has been about the average Joe, you know, that person that's looking for something to stick with. And recently with, you know, some of the athletes that have, that have moved in, um, what kind of things have you and Pearson talked about as far as, you know, visions and, and, and expectations and things and just things that you want without sacrificing that valuable asset yeah. for, you know, the, the, the mom and dad that just want to train? You, you can't be everything to everybody. That That is a universal truth. But I think that there's definitely room to, to show the people that do want to go down the competitive path that we have a place for them and that we can support them and give them all the tools that they need to do that. But also the average Joe that walks in here, they, they need to be able to realize that um, it's still inclusive because it's scary walking yeah. into this yeah. place. Not even the Pearsons of the world, the regular people, but they walk in and they see you know, these people doing, you know, pull-ups and thrusters and mm -hmm. squats and all these things. And it's like, oh my God, like, I can't do that. That's what everyone says every single time is I, I'm not capable of that. Yeah. And you don't need to be capable of that. You just need to be willing to start. Yeah. yeah that leads me to a question. Um, what are the expectations that you set uh, to the new member walking in? And typically there's two points of views, especially if they've seen the CrossFit games on YouTube. They're either, I can do that and I want to do that or I'm really scared, but I showed up anyways because that looks crazy and insane to me. You know, what are the expectations you sort of, you, you set day one with those kinds of athletes? The scared and the ones that are a little, maybe too gun ho Yeah, start slower than you think you need to. You know, just move because regardless of where your, where your starting point is, 
it, it's a very different environment than the regular gym and you're gonna be very sore and your body's mm-hmm. gonna be fatigued and it's gonna kind of freak out like what the heck are you doing to me um and eat humble pie because you know what even if you're coming in with you know massive biceps and yeah. you know big traps and all these things if you've never done this style of workout grandma next to you is probably gonna yeah. beat you <laughs> she's probably gonna beat you and you have to be willing to say that's okay because eventually i'll get there and you know like, you'll, you'll pass her up but starting off like that's the truth and truth be told some of those people do come in for that first work, work at it and they're not able to be humble and they don't come back right because yeah. right you know when so we you know we, we talk about expectations for the new members and trying to set you know uh you know an expectation for an experience that is not a surprise even though even with all the prepping and priming they still get surprised which is which is great but let's say you're talking to somebody that's maybe in that like i've been in it for a couple of years you know I'm, I'm comfortable and maybe i'm starting to maybe for those folks that, that start to lose sight of the the luster you know the shine of that early honeymoon phase where every every workout is a pr and every retest yeah. is good when you get into that I've been doing this for a while and I feel like I'm not making progress or if they feel like they can't see the progress that their coaches are still seeing. What, what advice do you have for those people? It depends. The answer, it depends. If you are doing this for health and wellness and trying to live a longer life, getting that plateau is okay. Because you know what? Maybe that new PR is just being able to maintain the PR. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to continue to grow you know your numbers but what people uh, fail to realize sometimes is if they quit where are they going to be they're definitely not going to be anywhere near you know those numbers and so be okay with that for those that do want to be competitive and do want to start to do the uh you know get, get higher and higher in those areas what we see a lot of is people want to do all the programming and uh, have the fancy programming and uh, it's just not necessary if you're taking class regularly and you give a hundred percent effort that's enough Hmm. what you do need to pair that with is working on your weaknesses right and that's not doing extra crossfit style workouts that's spending the extra 20 to 30 minutes of pull-up work or double under work or getting upside down or whatever that case is because that's really where you're going to continue to progress do you do you feel like that's a lot of times a a a sticky point where you know or, or kind of like a common error that exp- more experienced athletes get is that that desire to expand but instead of expanding down the path that they're on they try too many things do you think that that's it, a detrimental it is it is human nature almost you know a lot of people, and not just CrossFit, but a lot of people fail at starting a fitness journey because when I start, it's all or nothing. I'm going mm-hmm. to work out six days a week. I'm going to eat chicken and broccoli three meals a day, seven days a week. I'm going to do, you know, all these 10 building blocks. And w- as soon as one of those building blocks fails, the whole thing crumbles. And you just you yeah. can't, you're never going to make something sustainable when you approach things that way. Make one habit stick and then consider layering something on top and work that way like these things should be building blocks it shouldn't you're, you're not gonna what do they say you rome wasn't built in, in you know, day, whatever yeah, it is yeah yeah it's just that's not gonna happen and so you have to be willing to be patient and uh do one thing at a time yeah yeah well i think that's something you do so good at uh, you and elaine and hobby and travis um and all the other coaches here uh, each class and throughout an athlete's journey is setting the expectations from day one you know, that's, I feel like that's been our topic of discussion. And I'll say from a competitive standpoint coming in here, you know, Rudy gave me the platform to train on my own when I wanted to, which is extremely rare. But he also set that expectation of community comes first. Members always come first. And if you can buy into that as a competitive athlete, one, you're gonna flourish at FitStop because you know, you're gonna make friends, you're gonna make community that you've been missing for X amount of years. But two, you'll probably be a better athlete because your mentality showing up every day is you're happy. And that's just like every other athlete that comes here to class. This might be the best part of their day. And I feel like that's what the fit stop is, what what the fit stop is so good at providing is that one hour a day where people can come in and just whatever's going on, they can come in here, know that it's going to be positive attitude from the coaches, from the owners, and that they're going to get a good workout. How, how did you cultivate? Was that something that you were 
you know, adamant about from the beginning or was it kind of like luck and fate that you get the right people, you know, on the bus, so to say? When people come in for a tour and sit down with me, I tell everyone the same thing. As much as they're coming in to find out if we're a good fit for them, we want to make sure you're a good fit for us. I like well. that, yeah. Uh, and that's true. You know, if you're going to come in and your nose is up and you think you're better than, you don't belong here. Yeah. We don't want that in this place. Yeah. If you're not going to celebrate the person next to you, their wins as long as, uh, along with yours, mm -hmm. like that's just not the, the environment or the culture that, that we want here. And so, you know, there's other gyms yeah. down the road. Yeah. So, and I know like we've, we've talked about big C, little C, you know, the big CrossFit, the world of CrossFit. And we talk about small C of just like, you know, your local community, whether that's in your box or in the city that you're in with, with, you know, cultivating those relationships, because in the end of the day, you know, the, the sport and the community is better when there's more, not less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you, you know, we see this big kind of shift in this pendulum swing and big C, you know, and things trending really well over the last year or two, um, as far as like the small C, like what, what things do you, do you suggest to people, uh, like maybe our members of how to stay connected with small C? Getting together as a community uh, is important. And I wish there was more of this in the middle size city, like mm -hmm. San Antonio and even mm -hmm. like Texas. Right. But like it's a lot of the gyms out there see other gyms as competition and we really yeah. shouldn't do that. Right. Like we're all, we're all in this together. We're all trying to make people healthier. And so like, I wish there was more of that social aspect on a little bit bigger scale just outside of our four walls. Sure. So. Well, and you know, speaking of that, we've got Girls Gone RX coming up. We've talked about that the last, and, and then upcoming as workouts are released, we're going to uh, go to break those down, kind of strategize, yep. help you guys get ready for those. But for those that aren't, this is exactly what Rudy's talking about is what we mentioned last week is, you know, the, especially for our guys showing up, helping out, um, supporting our ladies as they, they compete and, and support a good cause. So. Three questions that we want to ask you, kind of like our, our lightning round for our guests. Yeah, real All quick. Right. All right. First one, favorite CrossFit workout? Oh my goodness. Uh, you know, I, I think Murph. I like the longer, just grueling style workouts. It's yeah. always been my favorite. I had a feeling you were going to say DT, but I feel like Murph is. DT scares me. I gained it yeah, too much. Too. Like there, there's DT scares the shit out of me. There's a lot of CrossFit workouts that, like I, so like um, fight gone or fight gone bad. Mm -hmm. I've never just gone. Like I will game it to where I know that I'm going to do 25 wall balls and 30 whatever, and yeah. you know, like in, and if I'm done in 30 seconds, <laughs> bonus. Um, so I've never actually done some of those workouts in all this time to like really test what it's trying to test. And that's, that, that is a deep dark secret. Well, that's, so that's well, for, okay. for, for those we talked about earlier about those so many years in still learning, still, you know, right. still, that's right. You, that, that's something you've learned about yourself and something you continue to have an option to work on. Yeah. I, I like the longer grueling workouts with that said, I do like Fran because it's over fast because it's over fast. <laughs> yes. And I like the thruster. Second question, what's your favorite food? Pizza, that's an easy Oof. one. Yeah. That's Pepperoni, easy. mushroom, black olive. That, oh, no, that, you lost to, me. I have to thank you again for, for taking me to the CC's buffet. Oh my God. Up in oh, yeah. I think we ate our Shout out to CC's for getting me through my last year at college. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> last question, how about a hobby, an interest, or activity that you do that maybe not everybody at the gym knows about? Yeah. I. So CrossFit is my number one hobby still. And you know, earlier you had spoken to the fact that we're always improving the gym, we're always doing things. It's really easy to want to do that when you're still in love with what you're doing. Ooh, um, and so that's where that comes from, to be honest. Like we, I still nerd out on this stuff and I still like to see, you know, the new equipment and the, the painted wall, just all of that yeah. stuff makes us happy. It makes us excited. Um, but aside from that, I do enjoy golf. I'm not what? good at it. I'm not good at it. Let's go golfing. Like, Pearson, Pearson's a golfer. There I, you go. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Well, it does. Uh, on the hobby side of CrossFit, it, it is coming from the outside. You know, not at fit stop for you know, except for like four months now. Um, it is a testament to show the constant outpour, pouring in. Sorry, you put into the gym because every day I show up, there is either something new or something redone or something rebuilt or somebody's doing something in the gym and you don't see that a lot 
Yeah. You really don't. So, you know, props to you and the team. And it is a testament to why Fitstop is, has been around and for so the, long. And to the boss lady. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, we'll it, it it's what we, it's just what we do. We, we yeah, want this place it. to be its best possible. And like you said, you, you love what you do, right? And when it's easy to do that when you love it. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Well, we want to thank you for being our first guest in yeah. Salon Talk. Happy to be and, here. And, uh, you yeah. know, it definitely got hot in here. Actually, one last thing. For the first person that leaves a comment on Facebook. Facebook. And since we had some folks leave comments on YouTube, first person to leave a comment on YouTube with okay. your favorite CrossFit workout okay. will earn a... Why are you pointing at me? You get to choose. <laughs> Guess oh. choice. It's on us, but you It's choose. on us, yeah. Let's make it good. Okay. okay. Choose. Okay. Uh, let's do a free month of sauna and... and Ooh. Uh, and and the cold what's the value on that, Rudy? The and value, yeah, yeah. three hundred bucks yeah. a month. Yeah. But so, so, just for, know. so for the first person that leaves a comment on your with your favorite CrossFit workout on YouTube and or Facebook, we'll get a okay. free month of cold plunge and of sauna. Yep. On Sauna Talk Crew. Dang. And, and and what was I gonna say? I was gonna say something. <laughs> Dang it. Ridiculous. Oh, if you already have a plan, that's fine. We'll just call for your next month. There you cool. go. There you go. All right, guys, we'll see you guys on the next episode, and we appreciate you joining us. See, see y'all.